Rock City Network's uh, getting to the end of the afternoon on day one here at One Movement and Natalie joining me from Blue King Brown. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Piece of cake, it's my pleasure. And uh, you, you're looking awesome at the moment, like, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the head wrap, the whole thing, the makeup, look at, and look at this. Yeah, we... Uh, what is that? Th this is Henna, and there's an amazing girl here in Perth, in yeah. one of the alleyways, Wolf Alleyway, and she's just set up um, in the street and doing it, and she's amazing. Like, I've had other Henna before, but this girl is actually steady hand, great design. So, so what killer. is that exactly? Henna is like a... Um, it's a powdered, I think it comes from a root, a root and it's powdered and, and you mix it with water and tea or other things but, and you kind of paint it on. It's a tradition from, I think originally it stemmed from Egypt but you know it's very, it's all through India and, and other places in the Middle East and you know they do it for wedding ceremonies and, and special things like that. So she's kind of got an original thing going on as well as inspired by traditional artworks. So you, uh, you got that done today or yesterday? Last night. Oh, last night. Yeah. Did it take long? No, just no, very quick. What do you think about One Movement? I think it's great, you know, so far. I mean, we, we came in last night, yesterday, and touched down, and it's good. I think it's incredibly um, well-organized, elaborate event for the first year, and yeah. it's so great that, um, you know, people have had the vision for this to happen, and then bringing people together to talk about, you know, the possibility of expanding Australian acts out and into the Asia-Pacific region and also those bringing those acts in is just a positive thing and it's going to start with people talking about it, um, thinking about it and getting together and that's when the, the reality of that can start to manifest and so that's what... Planting that seed. That's it, that's what it's process. about, it's about, and so yeah. I think One Movement will, is going to do that, you know, that's, I think, you know, obviously it's aims, and so, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here, and the weather's perfect, we love that. <laughs> oh, it's getting, it's getting better now, there's a bit of breeze, but before, oh, I know. oh my god. We're from Melbourne, you see, you, you came from Melbourne I'm too. living in Melbourne. Oh, it's cold. I guess Blue King Brown now is one of those, uh, one of those acts that if you're not on the festival... It's not a festival. It's not a festival. <laughs> you, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I've been practicing that all day. No, I'm joking. No, how do, how do you feel about that? Like people are like, Blue King Brown, we're going. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who's on the lineup. If your name's there, people are people are motivated enough to go and buy a ticket just to see you, Blue King Brown play. Well, yeah, you know, I think that the festivals these days, um, there's a lot of them, and they do cover many genres and. I'm sure that people don't just go to see Blue King Brown, but we are one of the bands that sort of. There's not really anyone else in our genre, if yeah. you know what I mean. Like, we, you know, we kind of border on and incorporate a number of different genres from reggae, roots, um, Afrobeat, and there are, you know, other rootsy acts, but I guess we have kind of got an, um, a different sound and we're often billed amongst rock acts, to be honest. Like, we're often the only rootsy thing am amongst 10 or 20 rock acts. So it's good, you know, we love it and the crowds, um, tastes, uh, ever expanding in Australia, you know, slowly really getting into the, the reggae and the dance hall scene is slowly becoming more popular here. It's still very underground, but it's definitely on the rise. And, you know, for a band like us, that's what we're trying to promote is, you know, that whole um, that whole scene, that whole music scene. There's so much to offer. Artists from Jamaica, from the UK, there's some killer tunes out there that Australia is just missing out on. So we want to make sure that they get it. Anything you can mention in particular for the people oh, out there? Come geez, on, I can mention few. heaps. Let's see some Jamaican artists you've got to hear. People like Queen Africa, Jar Mason. I'm dropping these people because they're also going to be uh, collaborators on our upcoming album. you got to check out Morgan Heritage, if you don't know the classics like Still Pulse and Michael Rose and Sly and Robbie, of course, um, there's there's a bucket load. Get out there on the international websites and the, the reggae scenes. You'll soon enough find something you love. This is my personal opinion on the whole subject. Uh, uh, with uh, Australian punters uh, starting to sort of embrace a, a lot of different cultures uh, musically uh, than they did maybe 10 years ago. And I, I think uh, the international music festivals, let's say Europe, America, Asia as well, uh, have really sort of been pushed here in Australia. Fuji Rock, Glastonbury, people didn't know about that stuff 10 years ago, like on a, on a regular basis. If you were talking, you know, at a pub or something like that, now they do. Do you think that has brought 
that understanding to acts getting accepted in Australia as well? Yeah, I think so. I think the more that Australian acts get out there, um, the more that the word will spread when they come home and and um, the more that international festival promoters come to Australia and, and see Australian acts, then in turn they will go and, you know, hopefully spread the word about something they've liked over here. And there are those big festivals like Fuji Rock and um, other other big ones like South by Southwest and Canadian Music Week that take you know a good a good amount of Australian acts into their program and I think it'll just be more and more I think there's there's more and more acts coming out of Australia that are of an international level and quality and that's what's that's what's up we're coming world <laughs> how do you expand your mind and expand your creativity being so eclectic in the first place when you once you once you are eclectic how do you push yourself past those barriers I think you just got to keep listening to music. It's all about that. Listen to other people, what other people are creating, what other artists are making. You got to listen to broad ranges of music. Like personally, I love everything from classical Indian to Rage Against the Machine and, you know, uh, everything in between, hip hop and then, you know, Gillian Welsh as well. You know, I love artists like that, just like country folk. So I think it's just. It's just healthy for your spirit and, and your creativity to just keep listening. Whether, whether you're inspired by other artists or just sounds, nature, the beach, <laughs> whatever, you know, like just stay alive in your, crea in your creativeness and don't let it get dormant for a period of time because it just eats away. For me, that just eats away in my soul. Like you've got to keep on, keep on, you know, trying to be inspired and and searching seeking and finding those things that uh, make you feel good and in turn that will inspire you I could yeah perfect <laughs> well wow. I'm gonna have to go home and think about that for about 20 minutes but that's cool because I like it all it's right. very Zen all right it's good that's so bad cool. so uh, uh, listen I'll let you go because cool. I promise you I wouldn't talk to you for, for too long and it's probably that. A little bit too long, maybe a minute or two. We'll check it later on. All right, you can edit it. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Uh, Natalie, thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Blue King Brown, Natalie, one movement, Perth. She speaks the truth. Thank you very much, Natalie. Thanks.